Welcome to Cutting It Straight with Pastor H.B. Charles Jr., author and pastor teacher at Shiloh Church in Jacksonville and Orange Park, Florida. Our prayer is that today's broadcast will bless and enrich your life. For more resources, go to www.hbcharlesjr.com. That's hbcharlesjr.com. And now, here's Pastor H.B. Charles Jr. Good day and thank you for watching Cutting It Straight. My name is H.B. Charles Jr. and we're glad that you're joining us for this new broadcast of services emanating from the Shiloh Church in Jacksonville, Florida, where I'm privileged to serve. We hope that you'll be blessed by the ministry of the Word and for more information about my teachings or the ministry of Shiloh Church, you can go to hbcharlesjr.com. For now, join us as we study God's Word together. I want to focus on the end of verse 14. I want to label the message simply, the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness. <clears throat> police groups and police departments around the country are expressing great concern about the deaths or killings of police officers over the past few years. Of course, it is always a tragedy when a civil servant commissioned to protect and serve the community is killed in the line of duty. But that is not the concern. The concern is that there are police officers who have died in the line of duty whose lives could have otherwise been spared if they would have simply wore their protective gear. And so now around the country, there are measures and movements to encourage police officers to wear their bulletproof vests at all times to help save their lives. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 13 teach us that the Christian life is a spiritual warfare. The follower of Jesus Christ will find his or her faith in Christ and obedience to Christ constantly under attack by the flesh, the world, and the devil. However, in Christ, the believer has the strength, power, and might necessary to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. But to access divine enablement for spiritual victory, the believer must put on the whole armor of God. We are commanded to put on the whole armor of God in verse 11 and verse 13 of the text before us. And then in verses 14 through 17, Paul will list out this armor. Two pieces of the armor are specifically mentioned in verse 14. The belt or girdle of truth and the breastplate of righteousness. Paul does not paint this warfare imagery by his keen imagination. The language of the text is rooted in the content of Old Testament scripture. In the Old Testament, the ways and works of God are often described in the language of warfare. Particularly, for instance, in Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 17. The Lord's deliverance of his people is described as him showing up having put on righteousness as a breastplate and helmet of salvation on his head. In the text before us, when Paul speaks of the whole armor of God, 
he is in a real sense talking about the armor that God himself wears when God goes to battle. At the same time, Paul's language here is not just rooted in Old Testament scripture, but it may be motivated simply by the circumstances he found himself in. Paul wrote the letter to the Ephesians while under house arrest in Rome where he was awaiting trial. Being under house arrest rather than in a traditional prison cell afforded him certain quote unquote freedoms. But these freedoms were exercised while chained to a Roman soldier at all times. And it very well may be that the language of the text is inspired by God the Holy Spirit as Paul simply observes the battle gear worn by the ancient Roman soldier. That soldier invariably wore a belt, which may be a sash made of material or a leather strap that held all of the other pieces of his gear together. And as Paul observes the Roman soldier, he is moved to remind the saints that Christian soldiers also have a belt to hold things together. We are to fasten on the belt of truth in order to be strong Christians. He also observes on this Roman soldier the fact that he is wearing a breastplate. The breastplate donned by the ancient Roman soldier was of different sizes and designs and materials, but whatever the difference is, the fundamental purpose of the breastplate was the same. The soldier wore a breastplate in order to guard, protect, and defend his vital organs from attack or assault, especially the heart. He could injure his leg or suffer a wound to his arm and still survive, but a blow to the heart would prove fatal. The heart had to be guarded above every other area of the body of the soldier, save the head for which he would wear a helmet. And seeing this, Paul writes to the saints that the Christian soldier also has a breastplate. It is righteousness. This picture of the armor of the believer is simultaneously a statement about the schemes of the enemy. text is reminding us, friends, by telling us to put on the breastplate of righteousness that Satan primarily launches heart-level attacks. Too often, Christians fall in battle because we are too busy defending the wrong stuff. Ultimately, friends, the devil is not trying to attack your family, your money, your education, your health, your goals, your dreams, your success. He's, he's not ultimately concerned about those things. He's launching attack against the heart. Sure, Satan will work in our health and finances and family, but not merely for the sake of those things. He, he, will, he will attack those things only to the degree that he could use those things to turn your heart against God. More than anything else, the enemy of our soul is concerned about what's going on in our heart. How do you put on the breastplate of righteousness? On one hand, you trust the Lord Jesus Christ. In Luke 18, verses 9 through 14, we are told that as Jesus travels, there's a crowd of tag-alongs 
who think they are righteous and look down on other people. Church folk. And Jesus responds by saying two men went to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, a highly religious man, who said, Lord, I thank you that I'm not like other men. I do this. I don't do that. I practice positive obedience. I, I, I avoid negative things. I, 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 I live right. And there was a tax collector who was in the back of the temple and wouldn't even lift up his eyes. He was so burdened with guilt and he prayed the only thing he knew to pray, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. And Jesus shocked the self-righteous crowd by saying that the tax collector went home justified rather than the other man. And then he explains why. Because everyone who exalts himself will be humbled and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. That parable is a warning not to think more highly of yourself than you are. You cannot be right with God by how good you have been, by what you've done, what you have not done. The only way to be right with God is by his mercy. And the mercy factor never changes. Too many of us think, we need grace to get in the door, but we need to work hard to stay in the house. Mm -mm. The same grace that saves you, sanctifies you, and sustains you. Are y'all in here with me? And, 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 and so, listen to me. You don't just need to hear the gospel to be saved. Every day of your Christian life, you need to preach the gospel to yourself. I mean, I think this is what this putting on the breastplate of righteousness is all about. When the, when the devil starts attacking your heart with accusations, how do you respond? You put on the breastplate of righteousness. You know what that means? It means, hold on to your pew. First of all, you agree with him. You agree. You are a sinner. You have said things you shouldn't have said. You have done things you should not have done. You have gone places that you should not have gone. When the enemy accuses you, agree with them, but then disagree on the basis that all of your sin has been covered by the blood of Jesus. Martin Luther used to say that after he got saved, when the devil started knocking on the door of his heart, asking him to come out, he'd open the door and say, Luther don't live here anymore. This house belongs to Jesus Christ. You got to preach the gospel to yourself regularly to guard your heart against the attacks of the enemy because the devil is he's sneaky. Let me tell you what, he gives you these lies. Let me tell you what he says first. He says, go on, do it. No, the, Lord, the Lord won't, he, it, won't be, it won't matter. The Lord, the Lord loves you no matter what. It won't make a difference. God understands. You, you weak, you need it. You need it. You deserve that. And then when you do it, He said, what in the world make you think God can love somebody who did what you just did? How you going to call your, yourself a Christian after what you just did? You got you to gotta look to Jesus and remember that you've been clothed in his righteousness to guard your hearts against the attacks of the enemy. Brother and sister were in the backyard. He started shooting his slingshot at mama's ducks in the back. Mama told him not to do it. He did it anyway and shot one of the ducks and killed it and pleaded with his sister, please don't tell mama. His sister said, don't worry, I got you. 
when they go in for lunch, when it's over, mama says, when you finish eating, Sally, I want you to make sure you clean the kitchen up. She says, oh, no, Johnny said that he wanted to clean the, the kitchen up for me today. He said, no, I didn't. He, she said, yes, you did. Remember the duck. Next day when it came time to clean up their rooms, she said, Mama, Johnny volunteered to clean up his room and my room. He said, no, I didn't. She said, yes, you did. Remember the duck. <laughs> when he couldn't take it no more, he finally went to Mama and confessed everything he did, told her exactly what happened and apologized. When he finished, Mama said, baby, I know you did it. I was looking out the window when you did it. I, I, I didn't say anything because I was waiting to see how long you were going to let your sister hold that over your head. Who am I talking to? You, you live under the burden of the guilt of accusation of sin. When, when forgiveness is available, you just need to go to God and tell him all about it. First John chapter 1, verse 9 says, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Trust the Lord Jesus Christ and then quickly obey the Lord Jesus Christ. In the summer of 1976, Israeli commandos raided the airport in Ntembe, Uganda to set free hostages. It was a successful raid in just a matter of minutes, all of the hostages, 103 of them, were freed, and the kidnappers were all killed. It was almost a perfect raid. Three of the hostages were killed in the process. When the commandos raided the airport, they shouted in Hebrew, get out on the floor and stay there. All of the hostages hit the floor, but the kidnappers who didn't speak the language remained standing and were shot. Three hostages, however, was, were killed because when they heard the command, two of them hesitated instead of obeying. One hostage was actually laying down and heard the command and stood up and was taken out by bullets meant for the enemy. The warning of the story is that the God who comes to rescue you can end up being the God that punishes you if you don't obey what he commands. Faith in Christ must overflow into obedience to Christ. He's clothed you, but, but you must put on the breastplate of righteousness. Do you see the language in verse 14? I'm almost done. It says, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, meaning that Christ has provided the armor, but you've got to put it on for yourself. You've got to put on the breastplate of righteousness to defend your heart against the attacks of the enemy. I want to make a bold statement as I try to turn to the end here. The, the devil cannot defeat a Christian whose heart is right. You got to live righteously before God. Romans 12, verse 1 says, In light of his mercy, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is the true worship God commands. You must live right before God, and you must live right toward others. Matthew 22, verses 34 through 40, Jesus says, The greatest command in the scripture is to love God with your heart, mind, soul, and strength, but the second is like the first. Love your what? as your what? Self. These, he says, 
on these two commandments hang all of the law and the prophets. The righteous life of the scriptures can be summarized in two big commands. Love God completely and love your neighbor selflessly. But, the, but, but they go together. You must love God and love people. To wear the breastplate of righteousness is to have a heart that is right demonstrated in righteousness before God and righteousness toward others. You, you must do right by others. Watch me, even if they don't do right by you. When you put on the breastplate of righteousness, you'll be strong against the attacks of the enemy. But did you know that also that if you put on the, the breastplate of righteousness, it'll make you subject to new attacks from the enemy. Don't be jealous of people say, oh, I mean, I ain't have no problems. I mean, no, no, everything's going great in my life. ain't Because, you know, the old folks said if, if you don't ever run into the devil, it only means y'all going the same way. But if, you, if you're living for God, at some point, Satan is going to confront you. He's going to come check on you. He's going to come check on you. As a young pastor, I was getting beat up pretty bad in my first church. And I, I went to my pastor and I told him, I said, I just can't take this. I got I to gotta, I gotta quit. He said, what you, what you going to do? You going to plant a church? You gonna, I said, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm, I said, I'm may become a talk show host, anything. I just can't take this anymore. He says, he says son, I know how you feel. You just want a, a, a week of peace. He says, but wherever you go, just make sure you don't preach Jesus. Don't lift up Jesus. Don't pray to Jesus. Don't sing. He said, because wherever you go, if you lift up Jesus, the devil going to come check on you. Y'all ain't in here with me. You don't believe me? Ask Job. Job just minding his own business. And one day there's a meeting in heaven. And Satan shows up and God says, where, where you come from? And he said, I've been going to and fro. The, the, the language is meant to say that I've been passing to and fro, one end of the earth to the other, unimpeded. Every... Everywhere I go, I may find somebody who says they believe in you, but the moment I start stirring up trouble, their faith collapses. Everyone. I've been going, ain't, nobody's faith has been able to stand against me. And remember what the Lord said? You ain't, you ain't met my, my, my man, Job. Job was my man. And that can't be true of Job. And Satan says, you're right. I, I haven't gotten Job. But it's only because you, you bought him off. You bribed him with blessings. You've been good to Job. But, but if you put a hedge of protection around, down from his life, if you pull down the hedge, Job will curse you to your face. Satan knows it's easy to do right when things go in your way. It's easy to trust the Lord when the sun is shining. It's easy to obey when you got money in the bank. The, the, the test is when the hedge comes down. God allows Satan to take everything you can take from a man, save his life. And the rest of the book of Job, after the first two chapters, is just arguments with friends. They are accusing him of some hidden sin and to defend himself. He is saying, God, where are you? He is demanding God show up for a deposition. To vindicate him from wrongdoing. Lord, where are you? You know I didn't deserve this. You know, Lord, I've been just trying to serve you, and you let all hell break. Where are you? Read chapters 38 through 41. The 
the Lord shows up for the deposition. And when Job get ready to start asking questions, God said, no, 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 no. I asked the questions here. You got to read it. He said, since you're asking questions about location, let me ask you. Where were you when I created the heavens and the earth? T tell me where I put the stars. Since you know so much, you, you want to know where I was. Tell me where you were. And after this series of questions, Job said, I put my hand over my mouth. Job never got any answers to his questions. He just got a harsh reminder that no matter how much the battle is raging, God is still God. <laughs> and because God is God, he's worthy of your trust no matter what. And he's worthy of your obedience no matter what. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds beneath the veil. And when he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before his throne. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. I'm finished there. God be praised for his work. Thank you for watching the broadcast. I hope it was helpful to you. If you're ever in the Jacksonville area, join us in person for worship at the Shiloh Church at either our downtown location or Orange Park location. For more information or resources, go to hbcharlesjr.com. For now, I hope you'll join us again next week and tell a friend. Thank you for joining us for today's broadcast of Cutting It Straight with Pastor H.B. Charles Jr. If you would like more resources from Pastor Charles or to support this ministry, he can be reached online at www.hbcharlesjr.com. That's hbcharlesjr.com. Thanks for spending the time with us today, and God bless.